periodic properties of the elements. When, when Mendeleev put together the periodic table, or the initial versions of the periodic table, it was mainly based on quite simply atomic weights and chemical properties. Things that had chemical properties were placed in these columns and they were arranged by increasing weight as they went. And that's sort of essentially what we have here today. Um, but there are properties of the elements that, that vary periodically and that's why they are arranged like they are today. And, and um, there are a, a, a number of properties, and we're going to look at about four or five of them. And the, the first property, uh, a periodic property of the element, and what we're, what we're, when we talk about periodic properties, what we're talking about is how does some property of, 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 of the elements vary going across the periodic table, or down the periodic table, or up the periodic table, or, uh, and so on. So in other words, um, are the, you could probably guess, for example, that the atoms are down up, up here are smaller than the atoms down here, right? And so we're going to look at properties such as that in detail here. All right. So the first property we're going to look at is atomic radius. Now, you might be saying, okay, well, wait a second. Can you... Can, how can you measure the radius of a single atom, right? Because, and this is a figure from your textbook, this is, this is a 18, figure 18.5 from your textbook. But what we're looking at here is the electron distribution, the, the probability of finding an electron at various points away from the nucleus. So this would be, the nucleus would be zero picometers away, and so on. And, right, and what we saw in last chapter is that, you know, the electrons aren't in a specific location, in fact, they're in no specific location unless we look at it, and and uh, look at it, and then we don't know where the other where the location can actually be, um, uh, uh, where the likelihood of where it could be elsewhere is. But so so it's a probability. Um, or, and and what we have is is you know how do, how do what do we call the radius? How do we call the radius of this? Okay, so so what we do to be able to talk about the idea of atomic radius is um, we have, say for example, if we have a, a covalent radii, so in other words, we, we have a, a bond made to some element, then we just simply take, say, half the internuclear distance between them, right? So because we, 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 the, the electron distribution doesn't go to zero as, we, as in a single atom as the, as, the nucle as the distance of the nucleus increases. It's possible to find an electron far away from the nucleus, but it's not very likely. What we, we'll talk about is the idea of, say, if we have an a, a, a atom bonded to another atom, we'll just take half of that distance between them. Okay, so, so, so that's how we can talk about this idea of atomic radius in something where we're talking about a, that has a, a diameter that's a probability cloud. Um, the, the, the atomic radius will depend on two factors. One, the quantum number of the outermost orbital Okay, and in this case, as you might guess, the size increases as n increases. So, as we as we have uh, elements that um, have uh, only print el at ion, sorry, elements that have electrons and only principal quantum number. One, it's going to be a relatively small atom. If we have elements that have atoms, uh, electrons in, uh, elements whose atoms have electrons in quantum number four, it will be a bigger 
atom. So size increases as n increases. Okay. Um, of the, the outermost orbital, right? Um, and, in, and the other thing it will depend on is something called effective nuclear charge. Okay, so those are the two factors that we're going to be weighing here. Now let's look at exactly what this is. Effective nuclear charge, what exactly is that? Effective nuclear charge is the net positive charge um, an electron experiences from the nucleus. So we have our nucleus, and I'll, I'll, I'll make it a, a charge, something to just remind us that it's positive. And we have our electrons that are somewhere on the outside of that. Now this is, of course, positively charged. The electron is negatively charged. The electron does feel, um, you know, some, some, there is some attraction, if you will, to the, uh, the nucleus, right? Because they're opposite charges. All right. Um, so so, so the, the, now... The, the effective nuclear charge works works like this. So I'm going to let's see here. Okay, so yes, we'll we'll look at exactly how that works. Okay. The electron density between the nucleus and the electron in question reduces the nuclear charge acting on that electron. Okay. Another way to put this is that inner or core electrons shield the, uh, the outer electrons from the full charge of the nucleus. So let's just draw a picture of what I mean by this. Let's just draw a quick diagram. So if, let's say you're at an electron in the n equals 1 energy level, and here's the nucleus. The amount of attraction or, or, or uh, that you'll feel to the nucleus is given by some value. Now, if you are an electron, there are many, many electrons between you and the nucleus, and let's say you're an electron in the n equals 4 energy level. For that to be the case, let's just take, let's just uh, grab the periodic table for a moment. N equals four ener energy level. Oops. Would mean that you're somewhere in this row, probably. You're a relatively large, you know, atom with a lot of electrons. Let's just say you're calcium. Okay, that means that there are. 19 electrons between the outermost electron and the nucleus. So what that does is that there's, the, there's electron density between this outer electron and the nucleus. So therefore, the inner or core electrons are, quote, what we call is, is, is shielding the outer electrons from the full charge of the nucleus. Therefore, they're attracted to the nucleus a little bit less than they would be if there was no, if there were no electrons between them and the nucleus. Now, now you could imagine, okay, that and the shielding is most effective. By electrons of lower n value.
So the shielding is most affected by electrons of lower n value. There's, there's going to be um, um, uh, some shielding, we'll say some shielding, by electrons of the same n but uh, lower L value. And there's no shielding by electrons in the same subshell. So these would be things uh, the same N and L values. So let's let's see what that means exactly. So there's there's going to be so if you are an electron of sulfur, for example, the 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 p electrons. So remember the the, the p electrons are here. These be the s electrons. The the p electrons will be shielded a little bit by the s electrons. Remember they're in the same. They're in the same uh, n value, but lower l value. This is l equals zero, l equals one. So the, these electrons, three electrons, if you're the outermost electron in a sulfur, these other electrons here would not shield you from the nucleus, but these would a little bit. Okay, there's some shielding by the same n but lower l value. There's no shielding by electrons in the same subshell. So a p electron is not going to shield another p electron. An s electron is not going to shield uh, a, another s electron from the um, full charge of the nucleus. Okay, so putting all of this together, what we get is the following. What we get is the following. We say, okay, so, so we're going to draw a, our, our periodic table. This is the, an easy way that I've found to be able to memorize these trends. <laughs> Okay, so as we go, so, so atomic radii decrease going across a row. So we're increasing in size as we go from right to left. So it's t as we go across the row, and and, and what's, so what's happening is then as we're going from over here to here, or sorry, well let's put it let's 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 do it from from lithium to neon. As we're going across, the nuclear charge is increasing as we go over. Right, we're adding more and more and more protons to this as we go across, but the electrons are being added to the same shell, which are ineffective at shielding each other. Therefore, the atom is going to get a little bit smaller, smaller, smaller as we go over in the periodic table. So between lithium and neon, lithium is going to be the largest. Neon would be the smallest out of those. So um, nuclear charge increases. Um, and electrons um, are uh, added to same shell and it's ineffective at shielding one another. So that's why we have an increase as we go down. Now, this is, makes even more sense because you could probably intuitively think about this it, the uh, atomic radius increases as we go down also. And that's just because the principal quantum number is increasing. So there's, there's a, a big increase there as we go down. Okay, so if what we'd be able to, so, so given, say, for example, arsenic versus tin, which of those would be a larger, have a larger atomic radius? Well, tin would have the largest atomic radius out of those.
Let's think for a moment. Actually, so, so let's look at one more trend between, uh, uh, we're gonna look at a trend called ionization energy. Actually, I'm going to stop there for a moment. We'll, we'll, we'll start that in the next video.